Hi guys and welcome to another 7 minute lecture. We will be looking at maritime piracy today. So what exactly is it and more importantly what can we do about it? That will be the focus of our lecture. So maritime piracy has many different definitions much like something like terrorism. So sticking to a singular definition doesn't do us any good. For our purposes all we need to know is that it's, uh, it's robbery or any type of criminal violence like hijacking, plundering, etc. committed via ship or boat, usually on another ship or boat. It's also usually conducted in international waters, but that isn't mandatory, right? So even if something like this happens in the territorial waters of another country, we could still make a solid legal argument that it's still piracy. This is obviously an ancient practice. Piracy has been around for as long as sailing has been around. What's interesting, however, with the modern incarnation of piracy is how it hit the scene so unexpectedly. Just 20 years ago, if you had told most people, including security experts, by the way, that piracy would be a security threat costing the world billions of dollars, they would have all laughed at you. They would have said, are you crazy? With the technology we have today, that simply is not possible. There's no way that pirates could become a major threat to the shipping industry. We have satellites, we have international boundaries, we have aquatic defense systems, we have planes that can blow these pirates to smithereens. You're crazy. And yet, from about 2005-2007 onwards, there's no denying that piracy is back to being a dominant threat in global security once again. Now, granted, most of this is centered in the Gulf of Aden with Somalian pirates harassing the shipping routes there. But even that itself is extremely worrying. Of course, there are other places where we've seen a resurgence in piracy as well. The Straits of Malacca in Southeast Asia have seen a lot of piracy. South America has seen a lot of maritime piracy in recent years with Brazil even creating an anti-piracy unit for the Amazon River about a decade ago in 2011. But the crux of it is still concentrated in the Horn of Africa with Somalian pirates. There are three major challenges we face with anti-piracy operations today. Number one, there are no full-time pirates which make it very complicated. The type of piracy we see today is different from the privateer or buccaneer model that we saw in earlier eras. There are no parrots on the shoulder, no eye patches, no wooden legs here. The modern pirate is predominantly a fisherman. They go out to fish most of the time. They themselves usually have no idea that they are about to commit an act of piracy on that day. But if the opportunity presents itself, they spring into action instantly. And they either hijack or pillage a ship that they happen to encounter, which they then estimate as an easy target when they encounter it. So piracy is an opportunistic crime these days, not a pre-planned one. The line, therefore, between a civilian and a combatant is immediately blurred. The line between a fisherman and a pirate is extremely difficult to tell, which means that our counter response is extremely unclear and unsafe as well. So if I'm a guard on board a ship and I see a boat approaching, do I open fire? Or do I just stand there waiting for them to board? I could go to jail if the court holds that I murdered an innocent fisherman for trying to come too close. I don't want that. And at the same time, the fluid nature of their identity makes it almost impossible for me to ascertain whether the incoming boat is a hostile one or not. We see this happening very often, where even if a ship has armed security on board, they are often very hesitant to shoot because they can go to jail. A famous diplomatic incident broke out between India and Italy in 2012 when two Italian Marines shot a couple of Indian fishermen thinking they were pirates. It turned out that the Marines were mistaken, that they were actually innocent fishermen all along. And those two Italian Marines are in a prison cell in India to this day. So that's the first complication. The second is unclear jurisdiction. The law of the sea is unfortunately so complex and the shipping industry is so interconnected that there is still no consensus on who exactly has the responsibility to prosecute a crime. 
let me give you a scenario let's say a ship owned by an american company with a canadian crew a french captain where the ship is registered under the german flag was hijacked by somalian pirates in the territorial waters of kenya and a chinese anti piracy vessel rescues the ship and captures the pirates right so i repeat i repeat american shipping company canadian crew french captain german registration somalian pirates kenyan territory and chinese rescuers who has jurisdiction over this crime the united states canada france germany the chinese somalia or kenya the multinational nature of this makes it almost impossible for even these countries therefore to figure out who is supposed to do what piracy by its very nature is multinational the last major obstacle is that countries themselves are very reluctant to cooperate with each other when it comes to anti piracy you see most countries unfortunately consider each other to be a bigger threat to their maritime security than the pirates themselves if you look at anti piracy operations in the malacca strait for instance indonesia doesn't want to share uh, naval intelligence with uh, the chinese navy because indonesia and china have territorial disputes with each other the vietnamese navy has no interest whatsoever in deepening maritime ties with china because they too are far more worried about the chinese taking over than the pirates so these internal disputes that many countries have with each other prevent any regional strategy or joint operations from making any progress since they since they are so suspicious of each other so those are the three major challenges that we face today in our quest to wipe out maritime piracy right now we are losing the fight pretty substantially we obviously don't have any data for 2021 because the year isn't over yet but in 2020 we saw something like a almost a 25% increase in global maritime piracy from the previous year so i guess we need to fasten our seat belts because we will be dealing with this for a while that's it guys i hope you found that useful if you enjoy content like this don't forget to like share and subscribe take care thank you and i'll see you soon